College Football 25's Dynasty Mode is wild. And look, we've all waited 11 years to get our hands back on a new college football game. And I'm happy to reveal that Dynasty Mode is back. Creating your coach and building a college program in College Football 25, it's going to force you to make a lot of difficult decisions. Back in the day, we could max out a coach and everything was fine. Well, you can no longer do that. And in my opinion, I think that's a really good adjustment because you're going to be challenged to really build a staff, a program, make sure that you're winning, you're getting recruits, and you're getting talent drafted to the NFL. When you kick things off in Dynasty mode for College Football 25, you got to decide do you want to be an offensive or defensive coordinator or just go be a head coach. You'll need to decide from kind of the following backstories. You can be a motivator, a recruiter, or a tactician. As a coach in College Football 25, you got to get familiar with the game's archetype-based coachability system. Every coach is going to start with a base class or a coach archetype, and you can kind of think of this as like maybe your special ability if you were playing an RPG. These base archetypes fall into three different categories. Recruiting is going to be your ability to, as you can imagine, effectively and efficiently recruit. For motivation, you can kind of think of it as your ability to develop players and the program culture. And for scheme, that's your ability to really crush it on the X's and O's on the field. With your base archetype, you can kind of progress in a variety of different ways. You could become an expert in a single category like recruiting, allowing yourself to become an elite recruiter. Alternatively, you could become a hybrid coach who's kind of, you know, really good in a lot of different areas. For example, a talent developer is going to be great at recruiting and player development. Your ultimate goal, though, is to become a program builder or CEO at top of the world of college football. And those are elite archetypes that you have to ultimately go out there and try to achieve, but they're not easy. It's going to require a combination of on the field success and ability progression. And the development team stressed heavily that there's no real single formula to kind of reach these statuses like you can't really just say oh this is how i'm going to do it you can kind of do it however you want you can mix and match your different ability combinations and progression paths and that's really going to allow you to personalize your experience as a coach which i think we all want i mean we all know it's a college football game so recruiting is highly important for all of us out there but if you focus solely on that it kind of leaves you very vulnerable in a lot of different areas that may be tough to actually have success out there in the field and while we're talking about success, why not talk about having up to $250 in bonus cash just for using code GGB this week? Underdog Fantasy is running some huge specials here for their Pick'em program, and you do not want to miss them. You can add one of the free plays you're seeing on the screen right now to your Pick'em and then select higher or lower on the other players you want to add, and then you're done. If those picks are correct and you're already ahead of the game because your free play is going to be correct for you, then you can hit for some big cash. The best news, man, as long as you're running code GGB, they are always running free specials. And if those picks are correct, which you're already using a free play because you used my code, so you're already a good portion of the way there, you can hit for some big cash. They're running these free play specials this week as long as you use my code when you sign up and you can get up to $250 in bonus cash. So make sure you check the link down below in the description and use code GGB when you sign up. With so many different directions you can kind of go for upgrading your coach, you're probably wondering, well, how exactly do you do that? Your coach level in College Football 25 goes up to a maximum level of 50. Playing games and reaching different goals will earn you experience points in the game, and then you can level up your coach and be rewarded with coach points. And coach points are what you're ultimately going to use to kind of upgrade your coach's abilities. In the game, there are four coach XP goals here that can be across a single game, an individual week, a season, or maybe even across entire careers. To start it off, the draft is one way. As you get players drafted, especially in the higher rounds, you earn a lot of XP. Individual game goals are ranged from a single play like an interception or a pass touchdown or just a major moment that kind of happens like beating a rival a top 25 team or even winning a national championship that'll help you out too your success in the recruiting trail is going to earn you xp for things like signing a five-star prospect having the best recruiting class in the country and so much more and then stats are going to be important too because you're going to have weekly goals like being ranked in the top 10 having season stat goals for your team individual players career goals like winning multiple national titles all those will add up and what I love about it too is that as you complete goals in the game, in the top left hand corner, you're going to see them pop up over there. They're going to showcase a quick description of what you did and kind of the XP that's going to be associated with it. And then similar to the old NCAA football games, you'll get an XP summary screen after the game kind of shows you your current progress. There's a really detailed section that lets you see how many of these goals you've completed as a head coach over the course of your career. And you can even actually have five different progression speed settings that modify how fast coaches progress in your dynasty. Now that we've covered archetypes and how you use experience points to kind of purchase them, let's talk about how the abilities work and how they're purchased in game. Once you've acquired and actually own an archetype, you're now able to purchase abilities within that. And then within College Football 25, there's more than 50 different coach abilities. 
Each ability can actually have up to four different tiers, and every tier has a purchase cost associated with it. Every single archetype in the game, with the exception of Scheme Guru, Program Builder, and CEO, have their abilities broken down by position group. And for me, I personally love it because it creates a lot more depth and kind of gives coaches specializations. This means, though, that coaches are not going to be able to be great at recruiting across every single position. The coaches having specializations in position groups means that the way you structure your staff is more important than ever. Maybe you're going to be a quarterback whisperer. That's great, but you're going to want to make sure that your offensive and defensive coordinators are skilled in areas that are going to really help you build out your entire roster. Because if all three of you are just quarterback whispers, maybe that's great for your QBs, but for anybody else in your team, not so much. Along with the boosts that are based on position groupings, you're going to have coach abilities that impact core gameplay too. So for example, the Scheme Guru archetype is going to focus on your specific gameplay style. So let's say you're a coach and you love to play fast. You can actually upgrade the fast tempo offense, which will provide you with the following boosts. With Battery Pack Tier 1, your offensive players are going to fatigue slower while running the hurry up. With Caught Napping Tier 2, it's going to increase the delay for defenders looking to the sideline at the snap. With On Their Heels Tier 3, you're going to get a team composure boost for first downs gained while running the hurry up. And then with Tip Your Hand Tier 4, you're going to have a chance to see the defense's coverage shell while you're in hurry up. Maybe you're somebody who would rather take your time and focus on making your team a well-oiled machine who don't really have to work against themselves and they're kind of unfazed by the home field crowds. To do that, you would upgrade the Discipline Community ability, which will provide you the following offensive boosts. The Hater Blockers Tier 1, which is a great name, is going to give you a slight reduction in crowd noise while you're on the road. For Teflon Tier 2, a significant reduction of crowd noise impact on the road. For Polish Tier 3, offensive players will commit slightly fewer penalties. And then for Clean Sheet Offense Tier 4, offensive players will commit significantly fewer penalties. You can kind of see where both have their benefits, but it's really down to your play style. And I realize that I'm talking a lot about offense here, but there are defensive counters to every single offensive play style ability. Maybe you're on defense getting annihilated by the ground. That's cool. Upgrade your ground and pound defensive ability to get better at shutting down the run and reduce the effects of a physical offense continuously running the football. The program builder and CEO archetypes that I touched on earlier are different in that they're only available for head coaches. They're going to be pretty essential, though, because they're going to give you a diverse range of abilities from roster management and program culture to home field advantage and recruiting pipeline boosts. So you are going to work want to work to get to those. One of my favorite things about the coaching ability setup in College Football 25 is that head coaches and coordinators both have the same set of abilities and archetypes available to them. And why that's important is that it gives you a natural progression from coordinator to head coach and further increases the importance of staff management, where your coordinators are either going to complement your strengths or shore up your deficiencies. Because the beauty of having the right coordinators on your squad is that all of your abilities stack, effectively increasing the impact of the ability. The beauty of having the right coordinators on your squad is that all of your abilities stack, so you can effectively increase the impact of a single ability or type of ability if you want. The impact of coordinator abilities also depends on whether or not the ability is related to their side of the ball, which this is a big one, you gotta pay attention. So for example, a defensive coordinator that has the quarterback icy veins ability, which boosts your quarterback's composure at the beginning of a game, that's gonna have a much smaller effect than an offensive coordinator owning the same exact ability. At any point in the Dynasty Hub, you can kind of go into the Coach Abilities menu and look at the different abilities your coordinators have using the bumper, so L1, R1, LB, RB, uh, to switch between yourself and then, you know, your coordinators as well. Each coach also has kind of a spider graph that's based on the abilities they have and the archetypes they own. One of my favorite features, though, if you press R3 when you're on that screen, it will overlay all three of the spider graphs. You can quickly see kind of where you guys are, you know, shining, where you're not shining, and where you got to get a whole lot better at. Taking all that into account, once you've actually created your coach, though, your journey starts with signing your very first contract. And it doesn't matter whether you choose a coordinator or a head coach, you are going to have performance expectations that you have to live up to, and you're going to have full control of recruiting and be able to play both sides of the ball during gameplay. Each new job you start will have you signing a contract with that particular school, and then it has the length of the deal and performance expectations shown right there for you. The expectations that each school are going to have for you is going to be determined by the current team prestige at the time of you signing, and then also their program standing. As you can probably imagine, the better the school, the higher the expectations. And then here are the four types of contract expectations you can find in College Football 25. So win X number of games, win a conference championship, make the college football playoff, and win a national championship. Your job security is going to be dynamic and it's going to adjust throughout the season based on the results of your games and if you're trending towards meeting your contract expectations. The further you are from your contract expectations, the larger you hit your job security is going to take. And then if your job security gets too low, you're going to end up on the hot seat. 
And as you can imagine, if that seat gets too hot, you're going to be fired and looking for a new job on the coaching carousel. On the flip side, though, meeting and exceeding those expectations on that contract that you ultimately sign is going to result in increased job security. And if you're one of those people who's like, I don't want to get fired. Well, you can turn off user coach firing in the settings and then you can be at whatever school you want to be for forever. It is also important to note that not every win or loss is created equal. If you're defeating a team that's ranked higher than you, that's going to have a much larger impact than beating a measly FCS team. But if you lose to an FCS team, it's not a good look and you might be in the hot seat sooner than you thought. Every single coach in the game is going to have a coach prestige letter grade that goes from A plus to F. Your coach prestige is kind of a direct reflection of your ability to meet contract expectations, but it's adjusted for the school and the role that you have. So what that means, though, is that if you're meeting expectations and winning like five games at a small school, that's going to have a much smaller impact than winning the SEC championship at a traditional powerhouse school. When you do reach the end of your coaching contract, though, the school is going to evaluate you and figure out whether or not they want to extend your deal based on your performance. If you're offered an extension, you're going to be notified the school wants to extend your deal and it'll be automatically accepted. I know that sounds scary, but like, don't worry. Having an automatic acceptance of your contract extension doesn't mean you can't change jobs. You can leave for a new job in the coaching carousel at any point in your contract. It does not matter if you sign a seven year deal after year one, just like a real college football coach, you can get out of there. When you go to sign a new contract with a school though, you can kind of look back at their season by season results over the last 20 years to kind of get a better understanding of what kind of program you're taking over. And speaking of the coaching carousel, which we just kind of talked about a little bit there, let's talk about how it exactly works. One of the biggest changes you're going to notice is that in previous iterations of the game, the coaching carousel happened over the course of a single week, but now it's going to take place over the course of five weeks, starting with the conference championship week, all the way until the end of the bowl season, just like real life. This is an incredibly important change, especially for those of us that play in online dynasties. I think instead of having, you know, one or two users holding up a dynasty because they haven't gotten to evaluate their job offers, we can kind of keep it moving. When the coaching carousel does kick off during the conference championship week, all contracts are going to be processed to decide if schools want to fire, extend, or just let a coach's contract expire. And if you're a head coach and you're like, I hate my OC, I hate my DC, I can't wait to fire them. Well, this is actually the week you get to fire them, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a little bit later. Once you've advanced into the bowl season, the first round of job offers officially go out to coaches. If you happen to get offered a job, there's a spot you can go to that lets you see the offer you have or any offers you have. You'd have multiple um, as well as the open jobs around the country. If you don't receive any jobs in the first week, don't panic because the coaching carousel is stretched out over the course of five weeks like we talked about. So coaches are going to get poached from plenty of areas and open up new job opportunities that maybe weren't open in week one, but could be open in three, four or week five. This is going to create a lot of cat and mouse, in my opinion, especially in online dynasties, because, again, you could take a job that's open for you early. That's like this is a solid job or you could hold out for a better one later in the carousel that may never technically arrive. And then keep in mind that you can view all the job openings via the all openings filter in sort of the menu. And then for each open job, you're going to see three candidates and their current schools on that menu. You can kind of use this to predict, I mean, to a degree, like which potential jobs might open up in the following weeks, assuming a top candidate or one of those candidates gets picked. So let's say you get a job offer. When you go to view it, you're going to be able to see the school's coach preferences as well as what happened to their previous coach. Like, were they really bad or did they just move on because they had a better opportunity at that point? And then the other top candidates for the job. And then with that, you can view the contract they're offering you as well as the expectations they're going to have as a part of that deal. Let's say you see the offer, you like the expectations, the duration of the contract, and you're ready to accept it. Once you accept it, you will stay at your current school, which is almost getting ready to be your previous school, until after the national championship game, because that is when all the new job changes are processed. And what's nice about this, it allows you to take one last ride with your current team, maybe coach any bowl games they happen to be a part of, and just kind of go off with your swan song. And also, when you've accepted the new gig, there's going to be a countdown in the top right corner of your screen that kind of tells you uh, how many weeks are left until you switch to your new job. So if you accept a head coach position, you'll be able to manage your staff and hire your coordinators at your new school during that same period, which is very nice. If you were fired or your contract expired and you don't have an, or do not accept a new job before the end of the carousel, you're going to be automatically placed on a new team after the national championship game now that we know the process of the coaching carousel let's talk about how schools actually determine who they want to hire so in college football 25 every single school has a different persona that kind of tells them what they want in their next coach here's a breakdown of the criteria they use to kind of evaluate and ultimately select the coach they want to hire i'm going to look at level so the higher your coaching level the more powerful you are and the more abilities you possess schools will really put a high priority of coaches of the highest caliber your scheme is important too in certain schools like the military academies are going to want a coach who run a very specific style of offense or defense the archetype we talked about a lot earlier in this video that matters too they're going to have a preference on the type of coach they're looking for to hire so blue bloods for example are going to look for elite coaches that are program builders or a CEO. 
the pipeline is massively important for them. We'll talk about recruiting in a different video, which is probably on the channel right now. Um, but all coaches have a primary pipeline, and that's going to give them a boost in recruiting. This is meant to simulate an area of the country where they have strong ties and relationships to recruiting. And schools are going to prefer coaches whose primary pipeline is the same as one of their school's recruiting pipelines. And then lastly, your coach prestige, which I think we all kind of figured here, the prestige is going to be compared against the school's team prestige. So if it's a five star program, they're not going to hire a coach who's like average, a C minus coach prestige. They would get killed by their fan base and everybody in the online dynasty would make fun of them. So they're not going to go after those coaches. You have to earn the right to get to a top program. Every single metric we just talked about is going to add up to be an overall school fit score. The game is going to use that to generate kind of a list of candidates for each job as they open up in the coaching carousel. And then a school will ultimately extend an offer to one of them. And then it's up to them to accept it or go somewhere else. Now that we have a good understanding of the coaching carousel, we've talked about, you know, your staff. Let's talk about managing your staff or firing them because we want to blame our bad decisions on them. Your ability to actually fire your coordinators is going to come in the conference championship week. And a big distinction here is that while the coaching carousel is like five weeks long, you can actually only fire your coordinators during this specific week. If you didn't fire them in this week, too bad you were stuck with them unless they're hired away by another school, which is an option. Your coordinators also won't leave you unless one of the following two situations happen. Again, you fire them or they're hired by another school. And then each coordinator has a two year standard contract. Once their contract is up, it'll be automatically renewed for two years, but you're always able to fire them. If your coordinator only has one year or less remaining on their current deal, there's a chance they can be poached and leave for another school. Any time though that your coordinator is poached for another team, you have the opportunity to obviously hire a replacement. I've talked a lot about firing coordinators, but you can hire new coordinators starting with bowl week one if you have an open position. When you go to hire a new one, you're going to be presented with a curated list of candidates that are chosen for you based on the needs of your school. The logic the game uses to determine, you know, that list is similar to the logic that the AI uses to determine their top candidates. What's nice is that when you're looking at a candidate, you're going to be able to look at their current school, their active archetype, their coach level, what other schools are interested in them. You kind of get a good amount of information. But that's important to note, though, you are not going to be the only school out there trying to court them to come to your school. Like they have other competition and people that are interested in them. A key thing that I recommend looking at, though, is the coach's talent tree. So you can kind of get a, a much closer look at their abilities to see whether they're a true fit for your staff or somebody that you probably don't even need. And when it's time to make them an offer, remember, it is not a guarantee they're going to accept yours. Keep in mind that you have five weeks to hire, one week to fire. But when you actually go out and want to offer a coach, you can offer one per week. And once you've actually offered them, they're going to appear in your staff management screen with kind of an offer tag by their name. After you've advanced the week and you go back to that screen, you're going to be able to find out whether or not they accepted or they went elsewhere. If a coach accepts your offer, though, they will join your program after the national championship game. If they reject it, you have the opportunity to go find another coach that maybe you like better and you now hate the other coach and want to schedule them in the offseason. Something to note, though, you are always going to have at least one coach available to hire that does not have any other offer. I'm not saying they're like the best coach available, but you at least will have one that's able to be hired. If you reach the end of the coaching carousel and you've not been able to fill your open coordinator position, or maybe you have somebody in your online dynasty who is not keeping up their end of the bargain, uh, you will automatically be given a coordinator that's on par with the caliber of your current program. And with the coaching carousel taking place in the off season, let's talk about the thing that everybody cares about in the off season, the college football playoff. We talked a lot about the hiring and firing period and being in the bowl season, but the thing that matters the most during the bowl season is the college football playoff. With the launch of College Football 25, we have a 12-team playoff ready to go from the jump. You're going to have the coaches and media poll that run throughout the entire season, but you need to wait until November to get your first look at how the 12-team bracket is kind of starting to form. And once you're in November, that College Football Top 25 for the playoff rankings kind of comes out as well. You kind of see how things are playing out so far, where people are maybe being seeded a little bit. There's a lot of nuance behind how the CFP poll is going to work as well, but the development team try to factor it in, you know, school and conference prestige, similar to how, you know, real life committees do too. Florida State fans, I'm sorry, because I know that's bringing up bad things for you. I mean, your record obviously is going to matter here, but know that you got to build a really good school to help give yourself an edge in the seeding. Once the rankings are officially set, it'll be time to kind of seed the bracket. The 12 team format is going to be a five plus seven model, which is means that the five highest ranked conference champions will get an automatic berth into the playoff. And then the remaining seven spots are going to be filled by a based on the order of the college football playoff ranking. The only way to get a first round buy in a college football playoff is to be one of the four highest ranked conference champions. So this means for a team like Notre Dame, who's independent, doesn't have a conference championship, they can never be higher than fifth in the playoff because they don't have a conference championship to play. If you happen to be one of the first round games, these are actually going to be played at an actual campus, giving you an opportunity to host one. And if you host one, 
that means home field advantage is yours. That is, of course, assuming you are the home team here, but as you kind of move into the quarterfinal and semifinal games, those are going to be taking place at bowls, kind of formerly known as the New Year's Six. So think of the Orange Bowl, uh, the Rose, the Sugar, the Fiesta, the Cotton, the Peach Bowl. Important to note, these bowl games are going to rotate annually, just kind of like they do in real life. I believe it's a 10-year cycle for those. Along with the college football playoff, the game is going to feature 34 bowl games that use their real-world bowl tie-ins. The AutoZone Liberty Bowl, for example, is going to feature teams from the Big 12 versus the American, and the famous Idaho Potato Bowl will feature teams from the Sun Belt and Mountain West. Bowl projections, just like the real CFP bracket, are going to be shown to you the first week of November in the game each season, so you kind of have that ready to go. And what I love about this is, well, we're so close to the game launching, but we're going to be playing the college football playoff and these real bowl games way before people actually can do them in real life and i love having that again if you've even paid attention to college football the last couple of years the sheer amount of movement across conferences in college football is crazy if you've paid attention to college football any time in the last couple of years the movement in conferences is enough to make you dizzy and in college football 25 yes there are custom conferences yes there are rules for conferences as well that you can kind of do there's a lot of customization here to make you replicate stuff in real life or just go off the wall and recreate old things you want the game does start though with every conference being set with their 2024 alignment the sun belt is the last conference to feature divisions and the scheduling logic has been set for both current seasons as well as future seasons uh, with year rotations based on conference rule sets as well. So for example, the SEC is gonna follow their eight game with one protected opponent rotation format. The Big Ten is gonna use their nine game flex protect model. That's all there. I know a lot of you already think, well, I wanna reduce this conference or make this conference or recreate this. Well, you can reduce any conference down to as few as four members and grow any conference to as large as 20. In addition to moving schools to different conferences, you can also have a school go independent to give them the ultimate and schedule flexibility. But remember, that will kind of ruin their chances of having a first round bye in the college football playoff. Talking about customization, I know a lot of you are gonna be talking about Team Builder. Yes, it is back and it can be used in an online dynasty. However, before you get crazy here, you can only import up to 16 team builder teams and it must be a private online dynasty if you don't know what a private online dynasty is like 99 percent of them are private it's just as long as you have a password associated with your online dynasty then that counts when you create a team builder school and go to import them in a dynasty which i'll cover team builder in a future video um, it must be done when you're setting up the dynasty you can't be in week five or year two and be like oh, i want to put a team builder team in no it has to be done at the inception of the dynasty Additionally, you have to replace an FBS school in your dynasty as team builder teams have to substitute for another squad. Going back to the conference customization, though, as a commissioner, you have the ability to edit each conference's rules. You can determine if a conference should have divisions, the names of those divisions, how many conference games are played each year, uh, if the conference will have conference championship games, and the location of that championship game, too. What schools you can set it at a neutral site location or at the home stadium of the highest ranked team. They give you a couple of options. When it comes to making these customizations for like conference membership and the different rules when you're doing this as you're starting a dynasty, you can also do it at the end of each offseason. So this gives you a lot of customization as things play out across your dynasty to keep it fresh. Maybe you want to replicate something from IRL. Maybe somebody in your dynasty is playing too sweaty and you want to be in a tougher conference. Cool. You can do all of that to kind of keep it moving. And a great quality of life adjustment, in my opinion, is that if you move a team to a different conference, they will actually have Jersey, Stadium and other patches updated to reflect that new conference. There's a lot of detail we just talked about for customizing conferences, but schedules and customizing them is also massive this year. If it's the third Saturday in October, we know that Tennessee and Alabama are going to be playing no matter how many years deep you are. Thanksgiving weekend, it's Iron Bowl time, baby. There are just certain games to know that at certain times of the year, they're going to be played and they should be played. And we want to make sure that's reflected. And College Football 25 has that reflected going forward. If you're wondering if week zero games are in, yes, they're in and they're scheduled year one with the future years being handled kind of by the AI to automatically schedule them. You're also able to pull up your full team's entire schedule. You've got the ability to look around the country and look at different schedules from a national and conference level as well. There's also a little helpful icon that kind of displays to the right of those that shows you if it's a national TV game, game of the week, or a streaming broadcast. Games of the week are going to be called by Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit, while the rest of your games are called by Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock. If you're in an online dynasty, you can easily see how many times a game has been played or restarted in case somebody's trying to lie about their opponent. That's easily viewable uh, as well. A really nice touch that I love in the game is that if it's your first home game of the season, a rivalry game, uh, your name is game of the week, maybe you'll see your home fans do some sort of cool stadium effect. So it could be a whiteout, a blackout, 
checkerboard, uh, a striping pattern, or just something crazy that you would normally see in college football for those games. When it comes to customizing your schedule, as long as you are the commissioner, similar to NCAA Football 14, you can absolutely customize your non-conference games. And as you can imagine, your conference games are going to have a little lock icon, which means they cannot be edited. You can select any week that features a non-conference game or maybe even a bye week and you can actually put a different team to play for that week. But keep in mind, you can have a maximum of 12 games. So if you want to, you know, add a game for a bye week, you got to remove another game before you can do that. A little touch I love that is really cool is that when you select a new opponent to actually play, instead of just seeing, you know, a list of names, maybe the ranking, they give you a little bit more info. You can kind of see their overall ratings, the schemes they run, and that kind of helps you figure out, do I really want to play this team? Because year one, you're going to kind of know like, oh, this is a good team. This is a good team. This is a bad team. This is a bad team. But five, six, seven years in, you are going to have no idea for a lot of these squads. And again, as a reminder, the customizing of a schedule or a conference can only be done by the commissioner. What's a dynasty without awards, though? Rivalry trophies are in College Football 25. They have kind of a really cool menu that shows those as well. But when you win a conference championship, a bowl game, a national title, those are going to contribute significantly to your coach's prestige, as well as the program tradition grade of that school. From an individual awards perspective, you have the Heisman Memorial Trophy that's in the game, and the vast majority of the other trophies are going to be some combination of either generic names, with a few of them being pretty accurate names too. The Heisman Watch is definitely back for the Heisman Trophy, so you can kind of keep tabs on how things are going each season. The menu looks better, but it's basically the same information we saw uh, from NCAA Football 14. In terms of actually who wins the award, though, the Heisman Trophy will be presented a winner in the first week of the bowl week. And in terms of actually who wins the Heisman Trophy, well, the winner will be selected in the first week of bowl week. EA Sports did confirm, though, that in addition to the Heisman Trophy, you're going to have the Lou Groza, the Lombardi, the Unitas Golden Arm Award, amongst a whole bunch of others. They're also going to have the Broyles Award for the best coordinator in the country to go along with their head coach of the year award. Preseason and postseason All-Americans are going to be named each year of the game as well. So when you're in the preseason, both first and second team All-Americans are going to be named at the national and conference level. The postseason All-American teams are going to feature the first, second and freshman at the national and conference level too. What is nice though, is you can actually follow the nominees and finalists for the awards in your dynasty hub. So the All-American teams are announced in the preseason as well as the first week of the bowl season when the other awards come out. An area though that I'm really excited about though this year is the tracking of player stats and the record book. You're going to have season stats obviously for individual players and team stats to look at. We kind of assume all that's going to be there. Career stats are going to be there for the players while they're in college too. The coach stats do seem pretty in depth, but the record book is really what gets me excited. So the record book is going to cover player records for their career season and at a game level but every stat category and every record is tracked at the national conference and team level as well and in college football 25 this is the first time we're actually getting records tracked at a conference level which i don't think that had ever actually been in the game before so it gives us more to try to shatter out there Pride stickers is something I get a lot of questions about. Certain schools will feature pride stickers. They gave an example of Ohio State and Florida State, um, and they're going to actually be applied to an individual player's helmet over the course of a season, just like real life. Each season, the helmets are going to start fresh, and then over the course of a season, based on a player's performance, more pride stickers are going to get added kind of as a visual representation of their accomplishments each season. What is nuts, though, is their attention to detail is crazy here. They worked with each school that has pride stickers in the game to kind of understand their fill pattern of how they put it in the helmet, kind of the different ways that it's essentially applied to make sure it's accurate for each team that has them in the game. A few additional things that I want to rattle off because I know there's some questions I didn't get to answer just quite yet. Uh, you cannot export a draft class to Madden 25. I talked about that at length in a previous video, but it really has to do with the NIL and just sort of how those contracts are being handled, but that is not an option this year. You cannot play the games of teams that you do not control. In theory, you could sort of retire your coach and put them on a different team and then play that game, but you're losing all the stuff you just did with that previous coach, so it's not worth it. For Dynasty mode, up to 32 players can play in an offline or online Dynasty. The commissioner is going to be in charge of the settings for the Dynasty, the roster file that's used at league creation, adding in team builder teams at the start of the league, custom conferences, custom schedule changes, uh, and advancing the Dynasty each week. Maybe you're tired of being commissioner or you are on vacation, you can actually transfer the commissioner role. And if you're running an online Dynasty or you just happen to, you know, not want to play a game because you're scared, you can force win or force lose a game if it has not been fully completed. So for example, if you're playing an online dynasty and two players are in the third quarter, the game desyncs or somebody rage quits or they have a power outage or whatever essentially happens, as long as the game doesn't finish, you can go back in and force win or force loss a player. I've also got a video that covers literally everything in recruiting for College Football 25, so make sure you check that out on the channel right now. But let me know what you're most excited about and disappointed about in the comments down below, but only if you've liked and subscribed. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one.